Hello YouTube. Good afternoon on this rather overcast uh, Friday afternoon here in Switzerland, but there is some light and sun still coming through. Still very pleasant and um, quite warm. Playing some uh, Johann Sebastian Bach here. And today is the, I guess, my quickie review of uh, LJ Peretti coffee coffee blend. Three point seven in tobacco reviews. And yes, the builders are still here. And here's a quick reminder of the five blends we're looking at. And every day now, I can see the leaves getting, emerging more and more, which is just lovely to see. Did one more round of shopping this morning, just to sort of secure us for about two months, you know? And that'll do. Still no toilet paper, but you know, I had fortunately a fair amount already. Try again in a week or two. So the cast today is a uh, Savonelli Trevi pipe. This almost looks like silver, it's aluminium, but it's a very nice pipe, um, rustic, six millimeter this one, but I'm using again my Parisa filter and a Sharo pad in it. I rather like this pipe, you know, for its look and style, and they're not that pricey, so lovely. Federation issue Zippo with a pipe gas insert in it, you know. Marvellous. And Tampa today has uh, his grace, the first Duke of Wel Wellington. Arthur Wellesley was his name. I love this Tampa. Arthur Wellesley would have gone on very well with Jim Kirk. They were very similar, both ladies men, and very good instincts as well as strategic and tactical thinking. But uh, he learned in the India campaigns that he had, that you had to improvise and have good instincts for what to do, which Kirk, Let's face it, always had. If his uh, opponent was one step ahead of him, he quickly recognized it and frog leaped the guy. So, well, I note again that it's described in tab Tobacco Reviews as a, as a ribbon cut. And I have to actually correct my statement yesterday about the Black Virginia because uh, if I really looked at it like this one, it's a rough cut, you know. I mean, I know ribbon cuts are sort of uh, variable. I mean, wouldn't you call that a uh, rough cut? Is that big chunk of uh, Black Cavendish in there is like huge. So I think uh, I think these are more like rough cut blends, but you know, I'm not sure that actually is so important. Um, although I love the Dunhill ribbon cuts because they are really beautiful, you know. I struggle with shags because then they tend to burn too fast, but yeah, you can adapt to it, you know. And I actually rather like this kind of mixed cut. 
you, you could almost say where there's some chunks in it and there's some fish flakes and there's some ribbons and there's a bit of everything yeah so what do I think about it well I had two bowls yesterday third bowl now the note is very nice coffee you pick it up not overpowering but it's there and you, and you find it and I don't have the best sensory nose but my wife also said yeah it's definitely uh, coffee there and a little bit of sort of lingering sweetness molasses around there you just find the condensation on the tongue really sort of pings that taste a little bit to you so it's definitely a, a molasses uh, kind of mild coffee but um, but absolutely there a little bit of of the burly nuttiness yeah around the edges there because there's a lot of burly and not much black cavendish in here so it's not also an overpowering sweet it's very descent it's like a coffee a swiss coffee cream because in switzerland they they roast the they get very good quality beans here and just like the italians but they tend to roast it much milder and uh, that's about where it's landing for me but high quality and it's sort of woven up and down with the sweetness you know one puff will be a bit sweeter than the other reminds me a bit of a kiss of the character of a Turkish coffee as well mainly a Swiss coffee cream but um, occasionally get little things of um, something sweeter and more intense it's beautiful it's writing sensory poetry upon my tongue weaving a ballet of sweetness and coffee delight previous bowls I had there was um, again no it burns very clean uh, no dottle so it's uh, it's not um, nothing was left on the shallow chalk at the end apart from the usual amount of filtering it, it does with the tars but on the surface of that pad there was there was really nothing so uh, it's not overdone the topping to the point and there's not uh, too many humectants and other stuff there that would lead to that. It's certainly never going to bite you this one for damn sure. I'm trying to smoke these a little bit faster than I normally would do just to see where the, the limits of uh, bite and um, to get a feeling of how the taste develops as you go down in the bowl. about a third the way down now and it's still um, very constant in its taste I always find with the filters there's a kind of delay of course because the filter is filling up you know and so when you start your pipe the first 10% you're thinking well where's the taste and then it starts to come through the filter The um, pian pianist here is Yuan Sheng, and uh, it's actually interesting how so many brilliant pianists come from all over the world, you know, a number of them from Asia, from China, from Japan, from other countries, and, and they are extraordinary, some of them. I'm still a great f friend of Glenn Gould, of course, and Andreas Schiff. as my favorite uh, pianist. And then there's um, 
Is it Alexei Kissin? Kissin is the one of the Russian pianists. It's also extremely, extremely good. Just from hearing, I'm not a very good musician. I mean, I dabble a bit in playing. Uh, Sandro Fazolari, one of my subscribers, shout out to you, my old friend, is a composer and accomplished musician professionally. That must be a wonderful gift, you know. I wish I'd have had the chance to have a go at it when I was young, but I think you have to learn as a young person. Hello, Hans. My neighbour, Hans, over there. That chip, 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 that's the blackbird. And there's two or three beautiful blackbirds and they go on top of this big fir tree all the way to the top. And his little tiny throat, he sings. You could hear it half a mile away. It's incredible in the morning. I love it. it's so beautiful in the evening of course when the sun has set and it's just start getting a bit a bit uh, dusk like he sings again he usually hangs about here because I'm always feeding them in winter now I still got bullfinches out there as well as the sparrows of course A couple of robins usually are out there. So, I guess I'm rambling, aren't I? You know, um, do I like it more than yesterday? Yesterday I said on the Redcoats return scale of four stars maximum to align it with tobacco reviews what would I give I gave it three which is very good I give this uh, yeah about the same maybe 3.1 uh, because it's uh, this coffee is you don't find so many blends that do that so well or uh, most most aromatics is sort of vanilla chocolate you know Okay, there's a few out there with coffee, I know, but, um, and it works, yes, it's there. You could have this in the evening, I think, with some coffee and with some brandy, or in the morning with your, with your breakfast, after your breakfast, I say. I tell you a funny thing about shopping when you suddenly start buying canned stuff again. It's very unpopular in Switzerland and usually quite limited. And my wife loves to cook um, everything fresh and she's very, very good. So we have very few cans in the cellar and uh, we realize, you know, you better get things that we can keep quite, quite a while because we don't want a frequency of going out and exposing, having all this exposure. So, got a load of cans of fruit and condensed milk. Can you remember that? Carnation condensed milk. When I was a kid, we used to have that with tin peaches, you know. It was considered then, in the sort of mid 60s, a, uh, you know, great, you know, condensed milk with tin peaches. But today, people think, oh, you know. That's, uh, you know, just for the army, isn't it? But tins are actually an extremely uh, effective way to conserve food over enormous periods. They, they found some tins in Antarctica in the old uh, station where Shackleton had been using it. It was a tin of uh, suet pudding or some sort of uh, very traditional old English um, 
sort of heavy pudding and um, a good choice for calories down there. And this tin was still sort of intact, a bit rusted and label almost coming off. But they opened it up and they ate it. And it was all right. They said a little bit chewy, but otherwise the food inside was conserved, you know. So I'm about two thirds or halfway down the bowl, let's say at least. Very constant. Still a lot of that flavour there, maybe a little bit less, but uh, still a good portion of the flavour is there. So it ends up in the, for me, very good again, with a slight plus over uh, Black Virginia. But definitely, I mean, I would have no problems to order more of these, but I've got, to, got everything jarred up. That should do me for a while. Oh, I think I bring it to a close. Um, another very good one from LJ Peretti so all of these have been at this point great buys um, tomorrow I think I'll try his original blend and um, see how that goes and let you know well thanks for looking in and uh, again everyone thank you very much for subscribing and, and watching this um, video and always appreciate the thumbs up and do stay safe and try and keep healthy and I hope in a couple of months we'll, we'll be through this dark tunnel. Take care everyone. Bye bye.